Yes, and then you see something like this. Was a gigantic tree. And it was in the wrong place at the right time. Look at this. Completely hollowed out. completely hollowed out then when the tree fell it fell this way look the trunk is just remnants pieces here and there and it probably went for 200 feet you can see it going we'll follow it along Here's part of it, broke off. I mean, what a day that was. Look at this, the remnants of this gigantic tree. Wow. Look at that, this part of it broke off, broke right in half. And here's where the top ended up. See, that's that's still part of that tree. This is where the top ended up. That's part of the top right there. So I'm probably 120 feet from the base of that tree. It came crashing down. Wow. This place was, was like hell that day when the fire moved through here. In wilderness. Wilderness, you cannot use a chainsaw. Uh, it's no motorized um, machine can you use. It has to all be done by hand. So the Forest Service has the people come out and do the work by hand. And these guys are no dummies. These guys are foresters. They really know their business. And I want to show you a wonderful little trick that we have. So this log that you see right here, this log you see right here is uh, obviously going perpendicular to the way it fell. Here's the tree. There's a the cut. There's the stump. If you just note down here, here's the cut. There's the cut. Those guys were so sharp, they took this tree that you can also see a cut on, put it underneath, created a fulcrum, and my lovely assistant Susan will hold the camera and I'll demonstrate. Once they made this cut, that tree fell down on this log and rock, and then they were able to rotate it, push it by hand, as I will demonstrate. You see, it's almost centered perfectly, so two people could rotate that log around. They push down, rolled the log, it's out of the way. They saved a cut, a whole cut, which by hand is a significant cut. Put a rock in there to hold it, and up here they've got a little block to hold it so it doesn't rotate. And if they should have a sign saying, please stay off. <laughs> Passing hikers leave alone, which we have just demonstrated. But isn't that clever? Those are some, some uh, very clever people. We thought you might enjoy that. 
So when the fire was in here, the wind would pick up and it became very intense. I mean, the <laughs> understory is com almost completely gone. You can see those trees right there, they're just willowed. Back a little distance, they were, com they were just little stubs sticking out of the ground. They'd completely burned away. So once the fire gets up and then it gets into a saddle, it gets very intense. The wind accelerates. Which just fans the flames. And this is what you get. It does look like, Susan was just saying, it looks like a, a war zone. It, it looks like a war zone. There's just nothing, nothing made it through that fire alive up here. I've been on this trail quite a few times and I don't even recognize it. You know, I mean, I kind of know where we are right now because we're on the, we're in this saddle, but there's lots of times in the past hiking. I was like, I, I, I don't recognize this place. It's amazing. Look at this. This was, you know, forested. Here's the only green that I, we've seen for probably a quarter of a mile. Looks like there was a water here at one time. Wow. The trail looks like the trail's diverging here used to go up that way. A lot of times when the trail gets so, so many trees fall, or in this case, it looks like it just got to be such a rut. The Forest Service blocks it off, lets the land heal, and they, they put in a new trail. So that's what looks like what's happening here. Yeah, pretty amazing. We were just talking about, we're glad we came this way just to see the contrast and take a look at what happened. We were worried about water. We didn't bring very much. But at least we know there's some water here. We can come back and get some uh, water. We, I don't think it's too far to where we were thinking about camping. We may have to rethink that, but we'll see. I had no idea the fire came up this high. Came across this saddle. You can see Mount Washington. Mount Washington, Mount Jefferson, and then in between Three Fingers Jack, it's harder to see. Yeah, this is really something. It's so different from the last time I was through here. That's for sure. hoping to spend the night up there but we need to find water we need to find some snow I'm actually quite surprised there isn't snow at, at this elevation over in uh, of the Willamette Pass there's snow here not so much and I think mainly because the forest fire went through and there's no shade it's 
you know, quite warm. It appears the fire went all the way to the base of uh, Middle Sister, which is uh, pretty mind blowing. It'll be a long time before this recovers. And uh, matter of fact, I think I have to stand corrected. That's that's South Sister right there. That's South Sister. Middle Sister we can't see because it's behind the husband. Pretty blown away at the uh, intensity of this fire. And that is South Sister. Fire almost went all the way up to South Sister. Mount Bachelor, and that is the uh, husband right there. So we'll keep pushing our way up and see if we can't find some water. We'd like to find a nice snowdrift someplace that hasn't melted yet. We'll see what happens. I see green up there. There may be some uh, trees that lived up there. That'd be good. So, uh, <laughs> needless to say, we're going to move slowly and deliberately. Because there's not much room up here. We'll have to do this in different stages. You can see the burn. Seemed to go on forever. When you're up here, it doesn't look that big. Because you can basically see the whole thing. South Sister, Mount Bachelor. I don't know the name of that uh, program over there, but boy, that's some steep country. In between. North sister, middle sister is the husband, a really ancient volcano. That uh, dark mound over there, that's called Black Butte. Uh, Belknap, Belknap Crater is close there. Mount Washington, Three Fingers Jack, Mount Jefferson. It is a gorgeous day, and there's snow relatively close, so we have water. Our plan came together. And don't think for one second that it wasn't some time we thought it wasn't going to. But anyway, we made it. We'll keep you, we'll keep you in touch. Mount Jefferson, Mount Washington, Look at this, this is pretty neat. Somebody did a really nice job. 1959. 1919. Whoops. 1939-1940. 1940s. Yeah, people took the time to carve the date and carve their initials. Look at this person. She did a really nice job carved in some triangles and different things. But, uh, oh, look at this sun. Isn't that cool? This was a uh, fire tower was on this point, on this rock escarpment. And there were people up here all summer long. So they had a chisel and a hammer and they spent time to carve their name, carve the date, different things. Pretty awesome stuff. We climbed up from our camp so that we could uh, enjoy sunset. There's Diamond Peak. We were there last week. We could enjoy sunset. So we had to bring you with us. I hope you enjoy. Hiking is happiness.